gonna kill that son of a bitch. I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. If you haven't seen part 1 and 2, here's a list of DLCs I've already covered. 19 was the Special Ops Vehicle Pack. Number 18 was the Penthouse Pack. Number 17 was the Unlockable Pack. Number 16 was the Bloodsucker Pack. Number 15 was the Invincible Pack. Number 14 was the Warrior Pack. Number 13 was the Nightblade Pack. Number 12 was the Horror Pack. Number 11 was the Steelport Pack. Number 10 was the Genki Girl Pack. Number 9 was the Witches and Wiener Pack. Number 8 was the Money Shot Pack. And finally number 7 was the Z-Style Pack. In this third and final DLC video, I will be covering the last six DLCs in the game. It's taken me a year to finish this video, but I hope you guys enjoy. Right, let's shoot this fucker! One last thing I forgot to mention, the PC version of Saints Row III had an extra DLC called the Team Fortress 2 pack. This pack gives the player nine heads to choose from from the Team Fortress game. I've never played the PC version of Saints Row, so that's why I don't have it in my list from least to greatest. For number 6 we have the Explosive Combat Pack. This pack gives you a really cool Empire suit and a really neat grenade launcher. If you're looking for a DLC that packs a punch, well here you have it. No other DLC will give you the satisfaction of killing your enemy like this one. You ready for this? I find myself fighting the military for hours using this pack. It's a shame that Volition didn't make more DLCs with great weapons like this. Gangsters in Space was the first DLC that actually had replayable missions. It came with three missions that gave you funny dialogue to listen to and new weapons. After beating the DLC, you unlock two UFOs and two homies. The alien weapons that you get in the three missions cannot be used in free roam. Volition says they didn't have enough room on their drives or something, I'm not sure. The only other problem with this DLC is when you're playing the missions, it gets all fuzzy to show that it's being recorded because you're in a movie. Other than that, this DLC is actually a lot of fun. The Fun Time Pack. This started as a pre-order bonus for the game. It gives you the Fun Time costume, the Moles Launcher, and the Genki Manipult. The Fun Time costume is one of the only suits in the game that actually gives you a cape. Using the Mulsk Launcher on people is basically using a mind-controlling Sassel Charge. Shoot any NPC with it except for Brutes and they'll instantly become your ally. Once you're done using your new friends, you can just tap the grenade button and they'll disappear. With the Mana Pult, you can pick up pedestrians and shoot them out the cannon. You can even pick up your co-op partner and do the same thing. Hell, even if you want to, you can get into the front and get shot out wherever you want. This can be a really fun DLC at times. I'll catch you later. This is so fucking awesome! Sit the fuck down, Jimmy. The Trouble with Clones DLC. No other DLC will completely change your game like this one. You'll be given three replayable missions, two homies, and a single vehicle. But none of that is why you'd probably get this DLC. The one real reason why anyone would get this DLC is for the superpowers. You'll soon learn that using super speed and fireballs is really fun. It's as if playing an entirely new game when you have superpowers. I know it seems weird for a Saints Row game to have superpowers, but look at the direction Saints Row 4 is going in. Volition's completely changing this game from its old gangster roots. Oh, no! oh yeah, the Shark Pack. This comes with the most amazing shotgun and a really funny hat. This is a must-have DLC in this game. If you don't have this DLC, then there's something wrong with you. For its low price, it is most definitely worth it. I actually got this DLC a day after Saints Row III came out. This gave me high hopes for the 48 weeks of DLC. But sadly, Volition came out with DLCs like the Special Ops Pack and the Nightblade Pack. Some disappointments out there. But DLC like this, this was worth it. Well guys, here we are, at number one. 
It's taken a while, but we're finally here. I hope this video was everything you guys wanted, and now, please enjoy the greatest DLC on Saints Row the Third. Welcome to the Sad Panda Sky Blazing! Professor Genki's own Sad Panda has created this all-new event just for Genki Bowl, and boy, it is a doozy. The Genki Bowl DLC. No other DLC will give you as much content as this one. You're given the Angry Tiger Mask, Sand Panda Mask, Sexy Kitten Mask, over four homies, Sad Panda, Angry Tiger, Back Sexy Kitten, and the Back News Reporter, the and the best thing of all, the Yarny, the most beautiful vehicle in the entire game. It is so ridiculous to drive around in this thing. Not only do you get these amazing items, you get over four activities to play anytime you want. You get Panda Sky Blazing, Apocalypse Genki, Genki Escort, and of course the Yarny activity. All beautiful activities that give you a lot of cash and are a lot of fun to play. The Panda Suit allows the contestant to fly forward faster than normal, keeping them up for a longer time. There's nothing more majestic than seeing a panda in flight, or is that? The only problem with this DLC is that the Panda Suit only works in the activity. It won't fly like this when you're in free roam. Otherwise, this DLC is definitely worth it and I highly recommend it if you don't have it already. One last thing, there was one extra DLC that was released for the PS3, called the Cheapy D. For some reason, the Cheapy D comes with the Genki Bowl pack on the 360, or if you get the viewer pack, you get the Cheapy D that way as well. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys for waiting so long for me to make this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.